welcome back to the youtube channel it's your favorite village boy mr ghana baby right here and i'm back again with another eye opening episode and you know what you need to do for me make sure you like the video can we get 10,000 likes on this video i feel like i need to force you all to like this video and don't forget to share because what i'm bringing you today it's something that i've never ever done before being an african content creator who is on a journey to celebrate african excellence i've always wanted to see africans trading among themselves because that is the only way that money can circulate among africans i've done episodes about africans who own real estate i've done episodes about africans who owns farms which means that you can buy your product from them you know what but there's one thing that i've never ever done which is fintech because i never knew that africans also own fintech company so i was doing a research and i found out that the fastest growing fintech company in africa is actually in ghana so i decided to reach out to them and the ceo actually said maya come because i would love to speak with you you know what i never knew that the fastest growing fintech company is actually owned by a ghanaian well, yes, we're actually the fastest growing African fintech, Wudemaya. So it's not just Ghana. I'm so sorry. You're welcome, Wudemaya. <laughs> <laughs> how did you do it? You know, b before I, I get to know how you did it, I just want to say this, yeah? You know, I travel within Africa a lot, yes. and a lot of people normally say that it's not possible in Africa. But you're one of the people that represent it's possible. No, it's more than possible for us. Africa is not just the, the, the end, but Africa is a starting point. We're going into Caribbean, we're going to Latin America. Our office in London is designed to populate that part of the world. We believe that global dominance, it's for us. This is the, this, Africa is the last frontier. We're in the last emerging market. As a, mark, as a frontier market, you can only grow. So we're growing, we're putting the flag everywhere. It's a nationalistic story, it's an African story. Anytime we mount a ZPay flag, as you saw outside, we also mount country flags of where we are. What does ZPay really represent? I think for me, ZPay represents the African. It represents the indigenous Africans that have come together to build a new story that would empower the rest of us. ZPay is actually a mobile money wallet, legislated and regulated by Bank of Ghana, and of course, by Act of Parliament in Ghana. We compete with MT and Airtel Vodafone. And um, it's, it's, it's a national pride that an indigenous company can rise to do that. Mm. A lot of time, as you and I know, it's difficult to rise from the ashes. But like the Phoenix, we rise every day. Um, we get hit in the struggle against injustice and privileges. We still rise. We, 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 today, we are that wallet that is the alternative wallet because we're agnostic. And therefore, you can use us on MTN, Airtel, or Vodafone Telco lines. But tomorrow will be the mainstream wallet because you don't have to port to use our wallet. And when we become the mainstream wallet, the world is only our oyster. Um, we started last year, July, and already we have about 970,000 active users on a 30-day transaction basis. And we'll grow. We believe we'll grow. We won't stop growing. We're, we're really driven to grow. ZPay is my wife. Um, she's called Zoe, so Zipay is actually Zoe. Um, oh, wow. It's also the life of God, the Zoe life of God. Um, Why would you name your company as your wife's name? Okay, so like I said earlier on, I'm a, I've always been a corporate person. I would married fresh. It was, I was fresh in marriage, but I was driven by my burden and my passion to move on. And um, they're talking about somebody whose name was at its car park. When I got to office, my name was at the car park. So I had to do a lot of convincing to my wife that it would be safe for me to move on. And when she finally agreed that I can quit my job and do this, then I said, okay, why, why, I would, in return, I would also name this after you. Wow. So she, she, she risked a lot. That's a lot of risk. I mean, moving from a certain pay grade to coming to a point where now you're going to earn so little or nothing at all and i didn't take a salary for almost three years and she was always beside you she was beside me yes. wife really represent behind every successful man there's a woman no, yeah. not all of them <laughs> <It's a Z> <laughs> and I, I guess the, the initially it didn't look real then the more real it got 
the more she believed the story. And so that's also made it more real. Today she loves the brand more than I even love it. Amazing. To me, uh, quite frankly, she represents the brand. I would love to speak to your wife. You have to. Uh, she's, she's a lawyer, actually. Oh. Very successful lawyer. She's very, very successful. I mean, my wife is, I respect her a lot. Very hard working. So my name is Zoe Tichia Pia. All right. I hope he did not meet you. I mean, because he was into banking. So being a lawyer, that's where you met. <laughs> Uh, Andrew is a pocket lawyer. <laughs> oh, he thinks he's a pocket lawyer. Um, you know, I, I find that our, when we're working together, our relationship is very professional. I'm also on the board of ZP. Mm. Um, and I don't um, let the fact that he's my husband get in the way of our work. Um, I'm very hard on him <laughs> when it comes to you know uh, meeting targets and he's very hard on me when it comes to deliverables as well so i think we have a very good professional relationship mm -hmm. and we try not to let our personal relationship get in the way how proud are you knowing that your name actually represent the company zipay i don't know it's, it's such an honor honestly oh. I, I don't know <laughs> I, I never realized how far the company would go we always had a, a big dream that you know this would be big but um now you know the levels to which the company has reached is just so awe-inspiring and it's an honor you know he told me that he convinced you <laughs> what was going through your mind when he was convincing that you know what it, it's gonna work what, what was going through your mind <sighs> i mean andrew's always been very unconventional you know and he has so much drive and passion for what he does um i don't think it took too much convincing um but i, I just knew he would succeed at it I, I knew he would do it well because he was so passionate about it i bought into his idea um very quickly because we had a few experiences with you know using cards and and cash and all the difficulties that come with that so it's something that you know I, I knew would do well. But um, at the time, um, we, he had like a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And you know, I worried as to how he would combine both because it's the sort of work that you have to be sort of dedicated to. Um, so yeah, initially I was a bit concerned as to how he would combine both, but Andrew's were, were, were you not Were you not so. scared when he quit his job? <laughs> It was a bit daunting, I must say. It, it, was, it was scary at first. Um, but I, I knew he'd be fine. I knew we'd be fine. You know, it, I, you know there's something that I, I really want to understand. You know, why did you decide to support your husband? Because I feel like um, there's so many women out there who need to hear from you, especially young African women. You know? um, there's this thing that people want to marry rich and people don't want to be part of a success. So if you have a message yeah, to young female out there, who would that message be? You know, once you get married, well, this is my mindset okay. anyway. Once you get married, you're a unit, you're one, right? And um, if he succeeds, I succeed. And Andrew has always been so supportive of my dreams. He's, there are no words to describe you know how supportive he is so it's only natural for me to replicate and I know that there are some women who worry that you know once their husbands become successful you know he might sort of leave them for oh, are you worried too? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know I, I'm not worried I'm, I'm not worried I mean Andrew's a very good man um, like I said, what he's shown me mm -hmm. of himself, even from mm -hmm. when he's consistent, mm. you know, he's very consistent. He's very selfless. Um, so he, the, he doesn't do anything to give me second thoughts or, mm. or to worry about him at all. And he's also a very prayerful person. I know he puts God first in everything he does. So I think that's my security, knowing that God is paramount in his life. And even when I'm not there to see what's going on, know that. because of his relationship with God, he's always very careful about what he does and his interactions. You still not so. advise young women? You still waiting <laughs> for advice for young women? Um, what's my advice? Um, 
I think if you come to a situation with a good heart, positive things come out of it. You know, sometimes when you go into a relationship or into a venture, always with doubts, um, with fears, then you, you start to take decisions that, you know, may not benefit you in the end. So if you come to a situation with an open heart and with honesty, mm. um, I think it will go a long way. Um, so if you're in a relationship, if you're in a partnership with anybody and they have a dream, um, if you know the partner that you're with mm. and you trust the person that you're with, you should always support their dreams. I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me. <laughs> and I really welcome. appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah. Listen, it seems that you're telling me a lot about Zipay, but you're not telling me a lot about you. Is it because I've not asked you any question about yourself? <laughs> Tell me, who are you? I guess I'm Zipay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I we, we, Zipay. Zipay, but definitely there's a brain behind Zipay, yeah. and you are the brain, and you want to know the brain behind Zipay. That's why we want to know your story. Well, look, I'm, an hum I'm a humble African. I'm Zipay, when, when I conceived, conceived the idea of starting Zipay, I had a corporate job. I've always been a corporate person. Okay. I came back home to start my career as a brand manager for Nescafe. Where were you? I was at Nestle, working as Nescafe. I was part of the team. You said you came back home? Oh, from America, from the US. Were you born and raised in Ghana? Born and raised in Ghana. Schooled in Ghana? Schooled in Ghana. At what point did you leave Ghana to? At 12, so to go do my university degree, undergrad, postgrad. So undergrad I did in the UK, postgrad I did in the US. I went to UCLA. And then I came back and I worked for Nestle. I used to sell coffee. I was a coffee and confectionery brand manager. I mean, what was going through your mind, leaving America, coming back home? Well, everybody around me thought I was crazy. Because I guess it's a promised land, right? Nobody goes, and it is really, it's a good land. I, I tell you, America is a good land. But I, I also felt like, there were other fortunes ahead of me that I would only get if I came home. And my dad was very instrumental. Of course, then I also got a job. Nestle gave me a job. The idea to do ZPay has always been there. Um, it's, for me, it's almost spiritual. It's almost like the day it dropped in my spirit and never left. Okay, I, I told you the last time, this is, this is where it was Beth, actually. So in 2008, October, we were in South Africa closing a deal and we thought, look, can we build an independent platform that is independent of the telcos and still competes with the telcos for mobile money? Mm. At the time it was called Fandamo. And today we've done it. When I started, I used to have it in my, I had my servers in my guest room and I have to wait for my wife to go to work so I can turn on the generator before I go to work because I can't afford the system to be down. Today fortunes have had it, God has been merciful we're huge, we're in 20 countries in Africa, we have 10 registered offices, and we have 14 markets very active. Ivy Coast is our second largest market, we're the biggest in Ivy Coast. For aggregation purposes, we're the biggest in Ghana for remittance aggregation. Mobile money, we're growing, we continue to grow. We know that we can only go to the top. He that is down need fear no fall. Um, and then also with, with my wife and God, you know, with my, I, I started this journey in 2008, but I did not manifest it until 2016. So you can imagine the journey. Even licensing, I remember applying for our license in 2017, June, and we didn't get our license till March 2020. It's a journey, and it's been a very painful journey, but all along every step of the way, God has been there. And I think for me, the story I'm telling African Ghanaians is, we Africans can do it. We Ghanaians can do it. Actually, we do not need money to do it. We just need to create a belief story. You know, I, I really want to know, through these journeys, what was the major challenge setting up ZPay? Well, first of all, we didn't start like this. We look grandiose and beautiful today. But we started as a dot, a little dot. So the first thing I remember very well, my colleague, wonderful lady, the first employee was me, of course. The second employee was Adjoa, a colleague of mine, a very good friend of mine, actually. So she, I was quite scared. She said, look, 
but you've got to start. You've done all those investments. You've come to this point. Just take the risk. It was quite humbling because that's my first day after, out of work. So she was a second employee. So I had to take a second job. So lucky for me, one of my investors wanted me to help them with a the platform they had. So that's my first job. So I would do that from morning to about 4 p.m. Then I went from 4 p.m. to about 11 p.m. at ZB. So that was the story. And I get paid. So I get paid on the 25th. They all get paid on the 27th. And that, that, that was the story. And sometimes my wife would look at me and ask, OK, are you sure about this? Am I going to work out? So yeah, we believed it. We kept at it. When we moved into airport, literally, our income is $2,000. Our rent is $2,000. But the good thing is that payroll was just about three, four hundred dollars because obviously the company wasn't paying me. So what, what do we do? We had an arrangement with our landlord such that we pay rent every 30 days. So in that way, we're able to have some for operations and be able to have some for rent the following month. The more challenging it becomes, the stronger you are. A lot of us just don't realize that. But actually, the darkest eyes before dawn. So the challenge hits, then you rise to the occasion, you face it, then after that, the dawn sets in. With all the challenges that you've been through, there should be one quote that drives you. What is that quote? So for me, I think for me, mine is my fear is my only courage. My fear is my only courage. You know, the fear that I'll fail gives me the courage to pursue. The fear that I would, I would hurt gives me the courage to be strong. My fear is money courage. That, that, it's a narrative. I keep telling you, you have to create a belief system. Let your fear be your courage. Don't let your fear hold you back. Because you see, at the point of break or at your point break, it's either your fear encompasses you and takes the best of you, or you overcome it and you become invincible. Do you see? So everybody needs to find their point break. I say we all need to find our deals and we need to break that ordeal. You must live your life to break that ordeal. As they say, all die, be die. Are Ghanaians really embracing ZPay? Well, more than embracing. So last year we served 2.2, 2.3 million remittance receivers. This year we served 3 million point two remittance receivers. Um, if you go to New York, we're a household name. If you go to Nebraska, we're a household name. In London, we're a household name. Um, in Ghana, on our wallet side, today we have about 972, 980,000 users. We started in July last year. So clearly that's a testament of interest. Um, we'll continue to grow. And um, we are, we're grateful to the people of Ghana. How does it work if somebody doesn't know this? How does ZPay work? It's very simple. There are two, there are two things on ZPay. There's a mobile money and then there's a remittance. So we write a twin engine program. Remittance, then mobile wallets. For remittance, for it to work, it's quite simple. Just go online, look for any of our partners, MoneyGram, Small World, um, MoneyTrans, we have so many, we have about 50 odd partners, both small companies, local companies. We're really changing the narrative abroad, especially in the UK and Europe. Use that, select ZPay and pay into your wallet. Or you can even actually use that channel to pay to third party. On the mobile money, it's very simple. Just dial star 270 hash and you can self-register. We're actually the only platform you can do your own self-onboarding. Do you have an app? We also have an app, it will be, it's on um, Play Store. We're just taking off, but it's coming back again. But quite frankly, everybody loves the USSD. Quite, we came into market initially as an app. We went back because we realized everybody loved the USSD. This is my favorite part of this whole video. I, I want to know, yeah, do you think it's worth it for Africans to invest in another African country? I think it's more than worth it. You see, one, it's a testament that Africans, we believe in ourselves. For any company to buy or invest in another company, it's because they have economic rent. Economic rent is the excess of what you have. That's what foreign companies and foreign nationals 
also have income to buy from us in Africa. So if we have economic rent, then why don't we build another African country or another African company? And it, it also affirms that indeed we're a true frontier company. And we're a true frontier market. So does it mean that you have people from different African countries working in here? Yes, oh, we do. We have an Angolan. We have, of course, Zambia. We have two Zambians. We have um, somebody from French, West Africa, Ivory Coast, actually. Mm. We even have an Italian. Up here working? Yes. That's amazing. So in total, how many people work for you? So we're about 80, um, 50 direct staff, and then about 30 contract staff. Do you believe that Africa is the future? I believe Africa is the future. Africa is the now. And let me explain to you why. I keep telling you, it's an emerging, it's the last emerging frontier market. But it's one of the few ones that is endowed with every natural resource. But beyond that, post the pandemic, what you're going to see is that your generation and I, we don't see the, the borders anymore. We believe in the invisible economies where we can move around like you do. You get up, you move to Namibia, you do a program. You move to Zambia, you do a program. It's because you don't see the borders anymore. They become invincible. Our generation who are born into the digital economy would even more so actualize Africa quicker than our parents ever thought about. So you're going to see a lot of intra-Africa migration. You're going to see us stop going by the boat and the river to abroad. We're going to do it within our communities. We're going to have a new acceptance culture. Don't forget, the guy who's in Mozambique knows what happens in Ghana. Using internet, data. That same spirit means that we're ready to build our Africa. The Kwame Nkrumah Africa is now, and it's not going to be government-led. It's just going to be private sector, individuals like you and I led. You know, and that, today, what you and I are doing is giving them another belief story, that their dreams can be met, and they can come true. And I guess because of what you just said, you definitely have a message for all Africans watching us. What would that message be? Um, I think with the Maya, I'll say, don't give up. Don't wait for government. Don't wait for anybody. Rise. And when you rise, men and women will follow you. Some will come and give you money. Some will come and give you support in kind. But just believe in yourself. Don't wait for anybody to encourage you. Don't wait for anybody to believe in you. Get up and believe in yourself. When you hear me, take a pen and paper, but just write three things you want to achieve and put now, now, now. Don't put 2025 on it. And just get up and do it. And as you start, you'll be amazed how life and nature and God will bring it into being for you. It's amazing. With the man, for me, that's my story, and it's a real story. And everybody who works with me, that's their story. We all came from different places with nothing, and we've come together to build something exciting. And we're proud of it. Corporate or entrepreneurship? I'll pick entrepreneurship. Why entrepreneurship? Okay. So I'll pick entrepreneurship not because I'm, I have freedom to be my boss. I'll pick entrepreneurship because you empower me. I'll pick entrepreneurship because just out of that vision, you touch the lives of many. That's why we're here today. Every time I've watched you, it's because you've touched the lives of other people. If I sit in corporate, I'll be a great guy, I'll probably be a managing director, but I'll be very busy looking at KPIs. When I take entrepreneurship, my learning curve is vast. You know, since you chose entrepreneurship, I need to ask you this question. We all went to school, but we never had that entrepreneurship mindset. I believe that this is the problem of the youth of Africa. Do you think there's something wrong with our education system now? Well, first of all, it's an interesting question. Um, it's a question that many ask, right? Let me answer you by answering you in another way, then I'll answer you again. It's very interesting though. So when I went to school in America, the US system makes you feel you can build the world. I, I, today I understand why Americans are who they are, right? Because the system, it, it, it teaches you to build the world. Then it, it, it reaffirms to you that you are capable. Your professor does this every day. We have what we call visiting professors. They come from industry to academia to teach us. 
even your project you do when you're doing a consulting project is real, is life. I think the time has come for us to look at the education system again. In the digital economy, we learn as we go. Our parents, they learned, then they implemented. Do you see what I mean? We didn't know you were saying you're not true and poor. In our economy that we are in, we're in a digital economy. You and I, we learn as we go. So we need to unlearn to learn and then relearn to succeed. And our leadership, which is you and I, have to find programs and ways to help the youth to unlearn so they can learn and relearn to succeed. And we need to bring that model back into the classroom. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what would that be? If I had a chance to change anything in Africa, the only thing I'll change is the people. Believe in yourself. I'll just preach one message. Believe in yourself. You see, the time has come for we Africans to believe in ourselves. The time has come for Africans to realize that we do not need to look like someone to be able to succeed. We need to move away from the concept of, you know, that, that new colonization concept. That we, we need to come to a, a, a new African concept. The new African is, I, I believe I can and I will. Maybe Obama will epitomize it by, yes, we can. But that's, that's the story. You see, the new African, it doesn't matter what school you went to, and it doesn't matter what family you belong to, what matters that you can get up, write the three things you want to do, and start doing it now. I'm telling you, Odemaya, that's all you need to do. And um, I would say that it's by force to support ZPA. I mean, I'm not a brand ambassador for ZPA, but I'm just telling you that I want to endorse ZPA. So each and every one out there, if you are in Ghana, star 270 hash register zipay now i just want to say thank you so much for talking to me and i really appreciate your time well we're grateful good work you're doing with the good work